bless is the wave your one and only weekly show on all things money i'm your host miss kk and on this show we get to unpack all topics related to personal family and business finances my hope is that as we conclude on each topic you are better equipped to make the next right financial decision stay tuned Welcome back to my channel. I'm your host, Miss KK, and this is the way. If you are new here, thank you so much for stopping by. We really love having you on board. Please consider subscribing. And if you are already a subscriber, an awesome appreciation to you guys for helping us grow this amazing community. I'm really super excited to continue our tax education series. And today I will be addressing the issue about tax certificate that normally comes your from your insurance company. So if you are a salaried employee, remember we said that your employer has a responsibility to withhold pay as you earn from, from your salary and they pay this over to the receiver of revenue on a monthly basis. However, they will only calculate it to the extent that the information is linked to your employment. So if you have anything that is taxable or that is deductible outside your employment, they will not be considering that. And the onus is on you to actually accumulate all that information and put it together in your annual return so that you can be uh, paying over the right uh, taxes. And, and hopefully at the end of each year, if you have additional deduction, uh, be claiming your refund that is due to you. So a typical example is the pension fund that we normally contribute or retirement annuity. So if you have a retirement annuity with the likes of Old Mutual, Sunla, Metropolitan, Namibia, etc., you can actually claim uh, that deduction using the tax certificate they send you. They normally send you uh, that tax certificate around February each year because remember I said that your tax year ends in February. So they send it to you just in time for you to do your tax return that is due in June each year. So, um, but you must remember that your retirement annuity, you can only claim a deduction up to 40,000. So if you have a pension fund that is linked to your employment and you also have a separate fund that is not linked to your employment, you must be taking your total contribution between these two funds, what is linked to your employment, what hasn't been linked to your employment, add those pension fund or retirement funds together. And you must make sure that whatever you are claiming does not exceed uh, 40,000. So in my case, I don't have a pension fund linked to my employment, but I do have a retirement fund that I I've taken out separately so the pension fund that the pension fund or retirement fund certificate that old mutual sent me i can actually just claim that in full if it doesn't exceed forty thousand. so that's the first thing that i want to talk about the second thing that i want to talk about is actually your study policies i know a lot of us have all sorts of policies including study policies and the tax act actually makes a provision for you to claim back your contribution that you've made in respect of a child or a stepchild uh, for as long as you are contributing towards tertiary education and your child is actually below the age of 26. So if you're contributing to a study policy towards your child's education, you can actually be, you should actually be claiming that from your uh, tax, taxable income so that you can actually pay less tax. But because most of us that are linked to employment, our employer would have disregarded this deduction. You will actually be in, in a position to get your refund back from the receiver of revenue, but you won't get your refund if you're not filing your return. So you need to make sure that when you are submitting your annual return, you are touching your payee Y5 that we've discussed, you are touching your uh, pension fund certificate, and you are making sure that you're not claiming any amount in excess of 40,000, and you are actually claiming your um, study policies to the extent that it's a child or a stepchild. So in my case, I took out a study policy for my niece and nephew, but I'm actually not claiming that from my tax deduction because the tax the tax act says child or stepchild. So I actually never called them to ask whether a niece or a nephew qualifies. So not to trade on dangerous ground here, I just decided not to actually claim those deductions. Or if you'd like to find out, you can always call NAMRA and ask them if a niece or a nephew actually qualifies for that deduction. So in conclusion, I just want to make sure that you're not sitting on those tax certificates, you're actually using them in the right way. And if you really don't understand anything, call them and ask them, why are you guys giving me this tax certificate? What must I do this? It's also their responsibility to educate their members to make sure that they understand the products that they are um, selling to them and they also understand the tax consequences of the products that they are selling to them. Other than that, I, that's all I had from this discussion. Thank you so much for requesting various topics. I still have two or three more topics to, the, to cover that have been requested by some of our viewers and I really really appreciate as I like that engagement. If you haven't done so, give this video a thumbs up, a like or leave your comment below as well as don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, it is goodbye.